cost of doing business. How do you price your work, right? Now, now we, we explained some of the factors. Now let's go to the real nitty gritty of it. And I'm actually gonna escape this and go into something that's gonna hurt you. Hopefully. This is a, a cost of doing business calculator from a, an association called NPPA. They represent photojournalists. And they're still around, amazingly, but they represent photojournalists. When you go to this site and when, when you type this calculator thing, it's going to come up with a whole bunch of numbers here, preset, because they're all, you know, photojournalists. So what you need to do here is to fill in all of these categories of what it costs you to be in business or to be alive. Okay, let, let's talk simpler. What does it cost you to be alive? <coughs> right? Or business, but alive. But yeah, now, if you're a full-time artist, you have to put everything there. And that's what we do for us. That's what we do. If you're a part-time artist, you take a portion of it. So let's say that I'm <coughs> only an artist 10% of the year. Well, then take 10% of that and add it all up. Because that, at the end of the day, and I'm not going to go through it all, but you're going to have to put your office or studio. All right. I don't want to have an <laughs> office. Okay. Well, you live somewhere, don't you? Right. You have a mortgage. Well, maybe you're squatting. I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I, I forgot that portion of it. You, you, your phone. And that's yearly expenses. Okay. Your photo gear. And everybody goes, oh, I spend way too much. Okay. Well. You do. Equipment. You know, computers. Computers cost nothing. Internet access? Nothing. It costs nothing, right? Verizon gives it for free. They do. I'm glad you, you got the same plan as I do. Web hosting. You have a website, right? It doesn't cost you anything, right? Vehicle expenses. That's okay. You, do, you have a bicycle. Office supplies postage, professional. If you want to know what each category is, you just click on it and it tells you what it explains it, you know, because it, it, it assumes that we're all idiots, which is a good thing, you know. <coughs> so it tells you what, what to enter in that category. So then you enter all of this, all right. Advertising, promotion, whatever, subscription, health insurance, we don't have any of that. Um, legal and accounting, forget about it. We just change our name regularly. Taxes, licenses, we don't, I don't pay taxes, I'm French, okay? You, you guys pay that. Um, office assistant, whatever, we certainly don't do that in most, oh, wait, Jerry and Scott have a few of those things, right? Utilities, that's your electric, you know, things. Travel, entertainment, and then don't even go with your desired annual salary because that, that's just fantasy land, okay? Uh, Non-assignment income means that you have a trust fund. If you don't have a trust fund, then, then you know, we're back to zero here. And, and, and this is number of days you can bill per year. This is basically designed for commercial photographers, all right? So if you want to know how it works, put the number of prints you want to sell per year, right? And we calculate that. It's going to give you the base cost amount of what each print costs you just to be alive. So if it costs you $40,000 a year to live and you're a full-time artist like us, right? And I'm, I'm telling you our figures. I'm not, I'm not telling you fibs. So it costs us what? About forty grand a year in our expenses. <coughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, we sold them. <laughs> uh, it, it didn't make much money on that either. But. Lots of grandchildren. <laughs> Lots of grandchildren. And we can't sell those, so... Because we love them. So, there you go. What are you going to do? So, when, when you add it all up, <laughs> let's say you, you spend 40000 a year just to live. Now, if you do it part-time, it's going to be a lot less, right? What happens if you sell 100 prints in a year and it costs you $40,000 just to live? You got to sell them for 400 a piece. There you just go. 
That's, just that's to no break profit. even. That's no profit. That's no no production cost. Nothing. The first each print. If you sell it for less than four hundred bucks, you're not meeting your bills. Ooh. Bummer, isn't it? What happens if your overheads are way higher? Get a second job. There's some <laughs> Make Scott work harder. But you know what I'm saying? It's it's you gotta go by this. It's there's no other way. It's not the square inch, it's not the guy next to you, it's not anything. This is this is what you need to do. You need to know how much money it costs you to be in your profession as artist full time or in your hobby. So it's gonna get a lot easier if you only spend ten percent of your time doing art, right? <coughs> or is it? Because if you st spend 10% doing your art, it's going to be less on your cell phone, less on your vehicle. But you still have to buy your cameras, your equipment, your software. You still have to do everything else, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you price your work? Well, this is where you have to do it. This is the only way to do it. This is the, this is the only thing you can do. Whether you own a bicycle shop or an art gallery or anything else. Does that make sense? If you don't do that, you don't know where you're at. If you don't know where you're at, you don't know how to price yourself. As a painter, if you produce 10 paintings a year and you're full time, and they cost you 40000 to live, what's your base cost of your painting? $4, exactly. If you sell it for four, less than $4,000, you're losing money. That means you're going to grow hungry. You're going to go broke. You're not going to pay your electric bill. You won't be able to see your painting. <laughs> Work during the day exclusively. Working outside because then you've been, you know. Plein air. That's right. You, you've lost your home. So now, now you're working in a, in a homeless camp. Oil painting doesn't. Oils for painting. Not cheap. Okay. So let's just do a couple more things here. Your production costs, which these guys are very familiar with, is your printing okay printing is not cheap i don't know if you've had prints made by by scott and jerry here it's not cheap why i mean those machines cost five grand a set of ink for the <laughs> epson 9900 is two thousand dollars hello two grand right the media 150 200 300 whatever it is you know the labor hello labor labor it's not free to run the printer matting then you have to cut mats these guys cut mats and they have a machine that does it right the mat does not come free the machine is not free and the person operating the mat is not free either matting is expensive it's actually one of the biggest expense in framing is, am i right in saying that that it's that the price of the matting is, is expensive and then you put foam core behind it and foam core has gone up what three four hundred percent in the last few years right it's expensive framing framing costs nothing just ask jerry cost nothing right shipping because once you've done all of that you got to send it right you got to send it to the client that says I'm buying your work shipping is not free in fact shipping has gone absolutely st steadily stupid <laughs> in the last few years okay <laughs> big money shipping also includes packaging because now you're sending fragile stuff that you don't want to get damaged and then insurance because you've got to insure the stuff when you ship it. Almost have a market percentage to cover labor and travel. Because now you're driving to see Jerry for the printing and then the matting. And then you have to pick it up after framing. Then you have to pay somebody for the shipping. And making a crate for it or a box for it. And they do this here too. 
then you have to pay for the insurance and if you do a gallery show or a museum show you have to have it returned and they will only take it in the crate so if you do a, a gallery show at the Sky Gallery in Portland, Oregon with 28 images of my tree series printed 20 by 20 and matted quite a bit bigger than that and, and framed and whatever and insurance it's going to cost you fourteen thousand dollars fourteen grand for the production cost and the, they're not going to sell any of the work <laughs> because it's a museum great I've arrived it's wonderful where's the trust fund But if you made money before that, maybe you can afford that. Market adjustment. Research your specific market condition. Okay. If you sell artwork in the Hudson Valley, New York, life's good. Mm -hmm. Out West, life's good. Wachula, life is not so good. Polk City, not so much. Okay, I don't want to denigrate Polk County, <laughs> but think about your market. Now you have to really think about your market. And markets are changing around the world. Markets in the Middle East, still strong. Markets in Europe, slowly going down because their economy is going down. Canada? It's Canada. South America? It depends, as any good lawyer would say. It depends. So think about, your, your, you've got to research your market. It's easy. You can find out how the economy of the market is. You can call galleries. You can call curators. You can call other photographers and say, hey, how's it over there? And they go, oh, it sucks. Find out the galleries that work. Jackson Gallery in Atlanta, pretty good, pretty strong. Galleries in San Diego, well, they've gone down. Does that make sense? Galleries in San Francisco, couple left. Three or four have gone down. So you've got to think about the, the market. You have to, to research. Research your targets. Who's buying work? The Dunedin Heart Festival? Can you sell a $5,000 photo print in Dunedin Art Festival? Really lucky. Can you sell the same print in the Coconut Grove Art Show? Yes, you can. So think about it. you got to research. It's all about research. You have to find out who you're selling to. That's more overhead. No, it's your time. It's your job as a business owner, artist, slash business owner to know where the market is where can you sell your work and, and will your work be relevant to that market okay be careful what you sell where you sell it okay one of the things at UPA gallery that we're very careful of is what kind of work we sell because we're going to the Middle East okay does that make sense there's a lot of, a lot of skin in our photographs from our artists because that's a different market so we have to be very aware of what people habits are their customs their culture it's research it's research how do you price your work you have to research it you have to understand your cost of doing business you have to understand your cost of production that will tell you how much your work is if you produce a thousand images a year you're in good shape actually produce your, your artwork and then try and find the market for it or research the market and say hey I can sell this to this group of people what do you guys think I think it's art and I'm going to create the art and then figure out what I can do with it <laughs> I could be another answer but how do you think corporations work any corporations work buy in the market and they sell it correct it, it's a bit of both as an artist, you should do what you really you're driven to do in the first place. That, that's really the premise of it. That's why we do that. If you're a commercial artist, as we are too, you do what a client wants you to do. 
So you have to, we understand both sides of this equation and go, where do we stand? Well, we do what we do because we want to do it. Well, we do it always with the back thought of what will people want to buy? Great artists do specifically that, okay? Be aware that great contemporary artists do that. They do what they want to do, but first they go and find out what is it that people want, okay? If, you, if your concept is road kills, photographs of road kills, that might be a great concept for you. Will it sell? I don't know. You have to research it. There might be somebody that, you know, the, the world did <laughs> California probably probably research you have to research there's a philosophical point here too and it's, is it that you're creating an artwork for yourself or for your audience or a little bit of both both mm. has to be both if you do it for yourself it fulfills your art soul right your soul but if you don't sell any of it you're not fulfilling your pocketbook so th there's, there's, there's a balance here Van Gogh never sold one painting in his life. Not one. Not one painting. He did it because he was, you know, nuts. <laughs> well, like most of us, that's why we're here, right? If you're an artist, you're, you're somewhat uh, damaged goods, I guess. So, conclusion. Operate as a business with a clear intention to generate profits you have to you have to okay you have to sustain your art most artists that i talk with or that kathy we talk with go out and never create art anymore because they haven't thought about this most important premise that you have to at least cover your overheads but ideally make a profit you have to. You have to. There's no other choice. Unless you're independently wealthy. And by the way, a lot of famous artists are very independently wealthy. So if you're not independently wealthy, then we, we have to go with this. If you have a huge trust fund, you're good. Maybe. How do you get one of those? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I never figured it out. <coughs> Do you remember the castle, the big house I showed you earlier on? That was my family house. It's no longer my family house because it cost too much money and my parents didn't know how to manage money, right? It was sold for one dollar. Wow. And a bad roof? <laughs> a bad roof, bad foundations, you know, bad roads, you know, taxes unpaid, a few, few here and there, you know. Yeah. Had 30 bedrooms though. Pay attention to your cost of doing business. Pay attention to it. If you don't know what you're spending, you don't know how much to charge, do you? So if you say to somebody, oh, it's a hundred bucks, and you're giving three hundred dollars of it away, how's, how's that going to work? Well, if you want to play that way, I'm, I'm, I'm going to collect your, your, your wallets at the end of the night, you know? I'll, I'll be happy to do that. Research, research. Research your production costs. Be, be a, a savvy buyer. Okay? Find out the best printers, the best framers for the best price. Quality and production and cost. Self-critique your images for their genre, subject matter, style and uniqueness. Okay? So you get a picture of a cat. And it's an average cliche cat. Do you think you're going to get six, seven hundred dollars for it? No. So self-critique yourself. Progress with your art. Learn about it. Go for workshops. Read books. Go on the line. Have a glass of wine. Whatever it takes. Get help, if you're unsure, from consultants. Or people like Scott and Jerry. They know a lot about art because they sell a lot of art. Scott sells a lot of good pieces regularly. Much more than we do, so we'll have to put a stop to that soon. Yeah. So. Uh, 
talk to curators there's a lot of people are gonna give you good decent advice okay Th does that make sense find out research 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 find out from professional association you have professional photography association you have uh, professional art associations does that make sense I mean just just think about it just just go and find out the information it's out there Artnet is, is a global um, art pricing network you have to to join and subscribe you can look at everything that's been sold in the last what 10 15 years photography art painting sculpture whatever and to tell you what it's sold for might not be helpful it's one way be careful be careful of this sort of stuff I don't want to end up with a negative here but this is something that came into my email box a week ago I don't know if you can read it it's a LinkedIn group and it says from Tuck Tucker and I think it's what the art um, it's one of these art groups <coughs> Tuck Tucker is the owner of the group and this is a big blurb on how to price your work and I'll tell you for free if you join this and give me a thousand bucks and I'll tell you what your work is worth it's a bunch of BS I'm, I'm sorry to use that word but being French I can use that it is an absolute junk LinkedIn group it has thousands of followers that read this junk and go oh, I'm gonna find out what my work artwork is worth this guy will tell you anything you want to hear for a thousand dollars but it says here it's free by the way and it's just you know you get all this spam on it it's just LinkedIn is a great spam generator. it can be good for us I have 5,000 LinkedIn con contacts and mostly artists and educators and curators and museum guys uh, for us, it's been wonderful. Conversation. It's been absolutely grand. But you have on LinkedIn, just like everything else, okay, a little common sense. So if somebody says, I'll tell you everything you need to know, if you join this for a price, then beware, right? Or anybody tells you that they're going to give you the lottery number for tonight for a small price, <laughs> yeah, you'd all go, yeah, right be aware of that that applies to the art world do your research that's all I can tell you how to price your work research it do your cost of doing business look at your pictures if you're not sure ask experts about your pictures go to, to Jerry and Scott or myself or, or Kathy and we'll tell you I mean we, we won't hide it if it sucks we'll tell you if it sucks because we have to because we have that that's part of our business Okay, to tell people whether this is good work or it is needs improvement. <coughs> we don't go, it sucks. But we'll say it needs improving. No, you're not going to get a thousand dollars for that image. That doesn't mean you can't do that six months down the road, three months down the road, ten years down the road. Okay. Research. Do your research, guys. Okay. Most artists go by street myths hearsay and, and whatever comes out of a different part of their body than their brain okay <laughs> think about it it's easy it's not rocket science look at your overheads look at your cost that's going to tell you right off the bat what you need to sell your work for and if the customer is not ready to buy it for that then you need a better customer you need a different place to sell your work okay so if the little tourist shop on the beach doesn't want to pay more than, than X amount for your work, then go to somewhere else because someone else will, okay? These guys are in the business of producing work that sells. If it didn't sell, you wouldn't be in business. And here we are tonight. So I can tell you it works, but you have to work at it. You have to research it. You, you, you can't just wake up in the morning and go I'll sell this for $128.95 
that is just something coming out of somewhere but nowhere near that's logic or, or whatever. You're welcome. Thank you.